DevOps Belgium, and I'm joined by Brian, who was in the keynote with Mark talking about Java 9 and all of the really exciting things we can expect. And so in the keynote, um, yourself and Mark discussed the new release cadence of Java. So could you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So historically, uh, the way we've released um, you know, Java is in big increments uh, with releases that take two, three, sometimes more years. Um, and they generally have a single release driver. And what we found is that this is not something that works so well because you imagine some big feature that you want to work on. You think, oh, It'll take two, three years. We'll release it then. And of course, it takes longer because everything does, and you find yourself having to delay things. And at the same time, there have been good features that went into the code base the first six months that people have been waiting two years for. And so we'd like to move to a more predictable release model where we're delivering every six months. When a feature is ready, it boards the next train. If a feature is not ready, it waits for the next train. And it doesn't distort the, um, the decision making of either uh, you know, uh, thinking, oh, we have two years, it's plenty of time, or at the other ex ex extreme, ha feeling like we have to rush things on, in under the wire. And so we think it gives us an opportunity to deliver more predictably and focus more on is the feature ready as opposed to what the schedule is. And, and we think it will deliver things into people's hands earlier and uh, we'll be able to deliver things in smaller increments. So I think it's a, it's a good thing all around. And what about the support model? I'm sorry? The support model. The support model. So we're still figuring out exactly how that's going to work. Uh, there is, uh, within OpenJDK, uh, there will be support for at least the first six months of each release until the next release comes out. There is also a plan for long-term support. Uh, the thinking is that that would be every three years would be a long-term support. But that's something that, you know, Anybody who wants to offer support can decide, well, we're going to offer support on every version, or we're going to offer support for more than three years. So we're, we're still working out the fine points of, of, of how, the, how that's going to work. Um, and it also depends on who in the OpenJDK community shows up and says, we want to contribute to the supporting of this release line. So it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's a new model. It's, uh, the support model is going to be a lot more open than it was. And, and we'll, see, uh, we'll see what happens. And we. Because it was a keynote, and we always have to have some fun stuff in the keynote, Project Amber was mentioned. Yes. The last time we talked about Project Valhalla, and this time it was Project Amber. So it's a few things that we've seen before, like the D, I'm going to get the words wrong, D verbosity, yes, making yes. words up, yep. of switch statements, for mm -hmm. example, or um, variable assignment. Yep. So what else can we, what else is coming? Yeah, so, so Project Amber is uh, sort of the new shiny thing that we were talking about. We're still continuing to work on Valhalla and Panama that we talked about last year. Uh, Project Amber focuses on trying to remove some of the ceremony that developers complain about. So, you know, the big complaint about Java is, oh, it takes so much code to do anything. And that's, you know, that's, that, there, there's some truth to that. Um, and so we've taken a hard look at some of the areas in which Java makes things harder to do than necessary, and in particular, the the things that we do really often, making them harder to do than necessary, and you know, tries to make those a little bit easier. So a few of the features that, um, that are part of Project Amber, one of them is uh, what we're calling data classes. It's a way of uh, defining classes that are designed to really just be holders for their data with less ceremony, not having to write out all of the constructor, equal, hash code, two string, accessors, et cetera. Um, which you know, won't be suitable for every class, but will be suitable for a large percentage of the classes people write. Um, and another feature that we talked about uh, at the keynote yesterday, and we'll talk about in much more detail in my talk tomorrow, is pattern matching, which is another one of those uh, make it easier to say what you mean. right? You know, so, uh, th and, and, and these features, uh, they fit very nicely into the programming models that are becoming popular in the cloud, which tend to be message-based. So uh, function as a service, message-based applications like you know, things like based on Kafka, actors, these are mostly about a message comes in, you look at it, you make some decisions about it, you do something in response, you're done. And the, um, the features that we're doing in Project Amber are a really good fit to making these simpler, more streamlined, easier to read, less code, um, and, and easier to reason about. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you.